Welcome to Beck's Bug Out Survivor and I've been wanting to do this little episode since I had what I have here delivered. So this is it on the uh, on the back. Just give me a chance to get this off and we're gonna call this camp. Actually I have two arctic bags and I'm going to explain why towards uh, the end of the episode um, but let's just first strip down the 58 pattern uh, bivvy and uh, sleeping bag and we'll see what we have the shoulder straps loosened up and this will be very welcome oh, and off she comes I'm going to lean the pack up against the tree Strip it down. We'll have a quick chat about what is in there. And first of all, in my uh, entrenchment tool housing, I haven't bothered carrying the weight of a shovel. I have my uh, skull cap. And with it being an Arctic episode, I'm going to bring out Arctic gear and I've got woolen gloves here somewhere as well um, it's only four degrees here in the UK and I know other places in the world get it a lot colder but it's it is cold enough uh, okay let's dive in uh, loosen off these straps by the way the pack here itself is the um, Arctic Marine Commandos at Bergen so that fits in with the 58 uh, 1982 kit that we have. Um, bedroll, 2001, so I'm a bit out of date if I want to make this an 82 kit. This is a pattern 90. I'm going to bring this along as secondary insulation. And on the inside is the actual 58 kit itself. Now it's going to take me a second or two to get this out, it's quite tightly packed in. So uh, I'll put a cut in this and we'll come back once I've dug this bad boy out. So, 58 bivvy, um, I'm packing 58 arctic bag, bed roll, get this down. Oh, mud on it. Never mind. Um, the ground here last night was really hard, iced over. A lot of it is um, melted down, so there's going to be. It's not going to be nice, muddy, and uh, we're in quite high up on the Clwydian Hills here in North Wales. Get this out. And there you have it. Well, let me have a lie down. At least to sit down. Oh. I'll tell you one thing for nothing. That pack is not doing my bad back any favours at all. Um, so I'm going to welcome having a lie down. Okay, so you think this looks like pretty standard stuff sack. It's anything but standard. The hood itself from the bivvy 
makes into a stuff sack and if you watch as I get this out like this this is actually the bivvy itself and I just throw it down on the deck like this that's the bivvy out central zip just like the pattern 90 and the pattern 58 has central zips this bivvy also has a central zip let's have a look into the hood of the bivvy itself inside the hood fits my 58 Got a 58 slug coming out there. Push it down to the bottom. Here's the uh, stuff sack, which now I can put my hood in, make up a hood. undo the sleeping bag, I only part undo the sleeping bag so I can sit on the hood and slip myself in let's have a little closer look so this is the 58 pat slug here, the, the sleeping bag um, this is US Marines Arctic and it is issued with the numbers on it's, it looks very similar but this is nylon this is the bivvy section there's the hood that becomes the stuff sack here's the central zip that runs all the way down and there's nothing quite easier I'm just throwing this onto the ground and getting in wherever you are even in a place like this I should be able to find somewhere reasonably flat treat myself to getting into the bag which I'm gonna do now it's a boots off job for this just gonna dump the boots fully clothed as I am. I'm going to sit on the hood and pop myself in. And once I'm all zipped up I'll be reasonably comfy at least to zero degrees just in how I'm dressed and with the bivvy and 58 pattern bag okay this is certainly good to zero degrees fully clothed that's all I've managed to take it down to because we just haven't had the cold snap here that was predicted um, about a week ago when I received this I just trialed it uh, very locally and it got down to minus seven that's when I bought the pattern 90 out uh, mud on everything here and I slipped the pattern 90 inside the 58 um, Ah, for some reason, I have a Gore-Tex bivvy as well here. I may as well show you the differences between the two now. I didn't even know I'd bought the Gore-Tex out. I did wonder why the kit was marginally heavier than it should have been. Um, inside the woodland Gore-Tex on the right, uh, that's the Dutch Army Hoop bivvy. It's coming in at about a kilo, 0.3. 
I'm going to have to put a caption up on the weight of the actual bivvy on the left. Remember this is only nylon and I've got a lightweight down 58 pat bag inside the bivvy here. So let's talk about some of the differences. So you can get hold of a good Gore-Tex British Army for about 30 quid and I would recommend you do that. Gore-Tex is fantastic. I just wanted to finish off the 58 pattern Falkland kit really. Um, these are available and they work a treat. Now they're not fully waterproof like the Gore-Tex. It's water resistant because of the central zip. Hasn't got a baffle but uh, a basher above me here you know I'd be good to some ratings certainly in the minus Celsius uh, I actually put the 90 bag inside the 58 bag with uh, the Royal Marines SAS Falklands 82 bivvy and it was too hot at minus 7 too hot I, I did both zips up and I was roasting and I was sweating and the cold was turning that sweat into ice um, and a lot of condensation so I just left one zip open um, now then I do actually also have the American MMS version of sleeping bags and sleep systems and it is no way comparable to either one of these I would prefer my Gore-Tex on the right there with a couple of decent sleeping bags in even this on its own I would never ever sleep in a sleeping bag without a bivvy ever again not even in a tent because it just insulates insulates so well so here's the 90 pot bag Going now inside the 58. Now there are year differences between these. Um, now I also believe the 90 is a down bag, but um, I haven't found accurate information regarding that. It may not be. I don't think it is. However, the 58 pattern is a down bag, so you've got the feathers, and they're not little duck feathers, it looks like they've come off a seagull. Right then, let's see if I can order it. Very easy. Two sleeping bags into the hood section. Now then, I'm going to hide this bivvy oh. just gonna put I'm gonna put the Gore-Tex away for now your Gore-Tex here for a Dutch army you're looking at over a hundred UK pounds um, but worth every penny if you want to save up for one of them cheaper way of doing it British Army Gore-Tex or you could go with something similar to this it was in the region of 25 pounds for the bivvy itself nylon um, wearing a couple of coats I'm not gonna need them this system here will take you down to proper Arctic weather I mean, no doubt at all, it'll take me down to even below 30 degrees centigrade or Celsius. Um, I am not going to have to need as much as I'm wearing to be warm. Oh, off with the shoes, straight into double bags. That's me in, that's me done. I just zip up and go to sleep. Now I'm not going to go through all the rigmarole of doing up all the bags. I'll just do them up part way. 
otherwise this episode's going to get very, very long. Uh, okay, let's go straight into the bivvy, which is done up from the inside. Right up to my neck. One of the hoods from the sleeping bags on next. And I can hood it up off a toddle on the bivvy here. As tight as I can onto the hood. Oh man. Oh, oh it's just stupidly warm straight away. I'm going to get it up over my shoulders and have a little relax. Oh. Um. Now, everything here has a crash zip. You can see I can just peel them all apart if I would need to get out in a hurry. And I have tried putting both the sleeping bags in to the built-in hood stuff sack it's a tight fit i may just want to use the pattern 90 but i did want to complete the falklands outfit that was the idea so let's just put this back in here now some people like to carry the kit loose in the bag as do I plenty of scope to carry your 58 pat system bivvy and uh, bag itself on top with the roll mat underneath This, in its entirety, including the Arctic um, Bergen, the 90, the 58 and 58 Bivy, is coming in at 6 kilos. So you need to decide um, whether you, you want to carry that much weight. I'm good to about 12, especially with my dodgy back these days. I, I wouldn't want to carry more than 12 kilos. Um, so let's try and grab some some numbers for you here. Okay this is the inside of the Bergen. This is on the sleeve of the Bergen. Body, rock, arctic, um, and then you've got the serial numbers a lot of this is faded out this is from the 58 sleeping bag I haven't got my glasses on actually uh, but everything will have its pattern numbers I want to show you how quick it is fold it all the way you're only using one sleeping bag, you undo the hood, a slip, a sleeping bag into what used to be the hood which is now becoming a stuff sack. And with it being a down bag I can compress a hell of a lot. In goes the actual bivvy. And also, you could fit everything you need for a quality warm overnighter just in this. So I could put in a good basher, a small BCB stove and some rations. I mean, I'll try and compress it even more. There we are. We're halfway from a stuff sack twice as big as it needs to be. Here's the 
bag for the 90. Not original. But uh, it doesn't have the compression. This could sit on top of here now. And roll up the pad. And that's more or less it. That's your, your whole deal done. Okay, it's the near completion of the 58 kit. Um, I do have a BCB stove. Um, that's really good to go as it is. Uh, excuse me. Got my back support on and I'm going to need it carrying that. It's only six kilos. It's doable. Uh, I'd have a much better pack than the uh, Royal Marines. That's a little too good to take out. That's just part of the collection, really. Um, it packs away relevantly quick with the right pack. I wouldn't hesitate just using that stuff sack, which is comes to head. 